Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord this morning. Welcome to the house of prayer, the Four Miles Rescue Mission. Glory. As the world turns around and goes left and right and up and down, we're still under the shadow of the Almighty. Fear not, the Bible says. It says, trust in me. Be of strong courage. I have not forsaken you, nor left you alone. Hang on. God is faithful. God is faithful. When we fail, he's still faithful. That's what makes him God. Let's stand for prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, my King. Father, we bless your mighty name again and again and again, my Lord, as our hearts settle down before your presence, Father. Lord, that you will touch your hearts in an awesome way this morning, my King, that you will rekindle that fire, almighty God, that we receive a fresh fire from heaven this morning. Father, a word that will just rock our spirit, to rock our souls, shake our boots, almighty God, or bring us back to that place of remembrance. The place, Father, one time when, when we heard your word, Father, we felt your presence, and, and we thought for a second, how would it be to serve the God Almighty? How would it be in my life if I really, really gave it all to you, my God, and was uh, just sold out for Jesus, Lord? Father, let that feeling come back in my heart again. Let that understanding be with us today. Father, unlock that door. Unlock that mystery door that we try to hide so hard, my Lord. Father, the Bible says that if we cry out to you, Lord, and you will show those great things inside of us, Father, that we will come to you, you will respond, Father, in an awesome and beautiful way. And let us understand, Father, that we're your children and that you're our God and you're our mighty God and that your love is amazing, oh, Father God, and relentless, that your, mercy, your grace and mercy is new each and every day that your mighty hand is still powerful and there's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care what anyone says, how the world is turning. They cannot take away my faith and my joy and my understanding, my conviction on Jesus Christ. He's the one and only. He's the King of kings and the Lord and Lord, and there is no other, hallelujah, beside our King. So today, Father, we pray, Lord. We pray, Father God, a little harder that you speak into my heart, Lord, that you would give me the strength to come to this altar and just surrender to you, my Lord. And we pray for each and every one of us here this morning, all of our cares and wares and tears of this world, Lord, that try to take away our faith from you and our sight, Lord, and our desires, Father, start decreasing, that we want more of the world and less of God. Father, but as we get closer to you, closer to the glory, the light of the world gets dimmer and dimmer. And I thank you for that, my God, that you're there and you're faithful, Father God. With your present help in times of need, my Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we raise our hands in the sanctuary this morning. Father, let our heart be pleasing unto you. This praise and worship, Lord, let it rock the very depths of heaven, almighty God. And may God true and the devil a liar. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Everyone present in the corner for a serve. I want to thank Brother BJ, where's he at? For awesome breakfast this morning, my brother. You went beyond the call of duty. And that's what we talk about this morning, being a servant of the Lord. Someone's going to have to tell us what to do. We take initiative and try to make this place a better place for each and every one of us. It's not about me, but it's about we. Hallelujah. Let's stand up for some praise and worship. Pastor, take us to the throne, sir. I didn't call your name. What is your name? Steve. <laughs> We know you're here, Steve. Amen. Pastor, sir, take us to the throne. I missed something. Who? Did I miss something? Praise the Lord. Lord, help Joe today. <laughs> All right. Song number 74 in your hymnal. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Song number 74.
Thanks for helping me. Song number 84. Song number 84. I love these old hymns of the faith. Song number 84, Grace Greater Than All Our Sin. that grace this morning 
That's what keeps us going on is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Well, the time for prayer. Any prayer petition, Brother Steve? Mm. I just thought of them and like to say a prayer for them. Amen. 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 Yes, we have a lot of petitions from this morning. A lot of disaster, a lot of deaths, a lot of heartbreaking news. You know, as dog was trying to sneak in again and he sucked the very life of our of our faith, you know, our joy, our belief in God, our trust in God. We have to be vigilant, vigilant, strong, stay, stand steady, stand fast, that God is who God says. He is. Anyone else? Any petition this morning? Unspoken prayers? Our families? Sir? Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Our mom, our dad? All of our brothers that are in the hospital today. Yes, we have sickles in the hospitals. Yeah, Becky and, Becky and um, Murphy, Murphy and the family. Uh, great sisters, great sisters man. That is heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. Sir. I want to pray for my niece who's down on depression. Amen. 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 For the one. For my son and my family. Amen, family. For my new grandchild. Amen. It's our granddad. Amen. That's good. Wow. You have a lot to teach now, see? Amen. God is good. Brother Terry. Yes, I want to pray for everyone here and the loved ones who have them. Yes, yes. We're going to do some stuff on campus. We see it. We know it. Sister uh, Kristen? Kristen? Yes. True. Very true. Very true. Yes. Yes. Especially in an environment like, like this that is so diversified and the presence of God is here. You know, folk kind of forget that. And then at the same time, <laughs> this morning I was praying, I was, and I was, asking, I was just talking to God, and it came to my mind that there's only two kinds of people praying. Those that are praying to come through a mission and get through and become Christians, and those that are praying to leave out of here. We don't want to be here. It's true. But in between that, that space or that gray area, if you look hard enough, you just might find what you came in to look for. You just might find that hidden blessing. You just might find that God can open that door that you've been trying to hold tight for so long. You just might find that you're a different person. You're not who you think you are, but the devil trying to tell you to believe that you are the deceptive that's inside of you. And you just might find that you are lovable and you have love. And we try to hide the love because we come from the street and we all try to be big and bad and we all got this, you know, you know, the macho and so so. I don't want to get deep into all that. You know what I'm talking about. And that's a facade we come before God. Because real men before God, they come to the altar and cry. Real men before God give God the honor and the glory. Real men before God, they take care of their wives and their children and their home. We've lost some stuff and we fell out the radar. We made mistakes. And we've been beat down. And that's a given. But that was a chance to come back in the ring. That was a chance to be the greatest for God. And for yourself. And for us to serve God, wherever I go, people have talked about the mission, and, and, and we, we, the standards up here now. Our standards have grown around the world and people around us because God wants us to be that way. And there's good people here doing good things. Let's not stop. Let's not get weary. Come and get what you can to get. Give God the glory. Anyone else? I feel like preaching now. Brother Will? Yes, uh
I got some pastors now in different countries that their sons been slaughtered, that they hang them. A lot of folks want to hear about that. It's not going to happen here. It's coming this way. Churches burnt down, kids on the street getting shot. Brother Mark. Uh, Mark. I was getting there. Yes. Easy, easy. Hell, easy, let's not take it. Okay, I just want to say on top of that, just because we have different views, amen. I wanted to race before you got there, but just because we have different views, let's not disrespect each other. Because you know something? The White House don't know anything about us here. Only God. And I hate to hurt somebody's feelings. But I want to keep it real in my life. See, I've been to combat. How many times y'all got shot? How many times you've been a gray blast? How many times y'all been starving? How many times you had to run for your life? To serve our country and to serve God. We can't go there. God called us to be here at this moment in time. And no matter what we think about the world, that's irrelevant to what God has for you right now. I can't put my trust in man. They don't know I'm here. I don't see Billy Gates donated ten thousand to ten million dollars or a million dollars, one percent of what he has here. I want to hear nobody's feelings again. We come here to serve God, to change our lives. Those of you who stay behind, that's sinking sand. And this is the commotion we have in here. And the enemy is good at that, making us fight with each other. Yeah, we have to sleep with each other. Yeah, we have to eat with each other. And that's a reality. We got the guys here that are working hard trying to keep the campus together. And then we got this, you know, this push and pull. We see it. We see it. It's real. And I'm sorry they have to rest on Sunday morning. But that triggers to a, pe a place of peace, a place of understanding, a place that, that, that we, 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 we've come here because God allowed us to come here. No other political party. God chose his grace. And mercy, we're just saying, his grace, his grace, God's grace. And so we don't get that up here and in here. The only difference we have, the guys outside of these gates, is that God chose that we answer the call. Now let's run with this call. Let's serve God and let God do what God can do best. God don't make mistakes. Amen? Amen. Any more prayers? Amen. 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 Yes, our sister had given the GD classes. Awesome. We have awesome, awesome doors opening. She's taking the time to serve with a true heart, a fervent heart. She's excited. We're excited. We got guys doing get, you know, you're growing your intellect and we're growing in the gospel. Library and sanctuary. Put it together. Brother Bill. Yes, yes. Yes, our families, we're going through a lot of disasters, a lot of hard times. The world is going freaking frat, if I can say it that way. But only God can turn it around. Only God can make that crooked straight. Only God can bring light with this darkness. Only God and God alone. Let's stand for prayer. Father in heaven. We're so glad that you are in control of everything. We don't need to look any farther than thee, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and praise you that you have given us an opportunity to live in a peaceful land, worship thee as our conscience would lead us. We thank thee for that. And we thank you, Lord, for the mission and all is provided for us. We are of all others most grateful. And pray that you would grant to each of us a thankful, grateful spirit for all you've done for us. And now, Lord, we look to thee today 
There are some sick among us. I know that you have heard these prayer requests several times already this morning. But Lord, we realize that you are and do want to hear our prayers and you are willing to answer and to heal as only you can do. I pray you'd touch my dear wife that she would be delivered from this affliction that others here who have requested prayer, they would really see the move of God in these lives. Whether it be our mission friends that are in the hospital today or those that among us are sick, we're asking for your divine presence. And then Lord, you know also about this great country of ours and all the commotion that's going on and has been going on for four years. We're asking you, Lord, to intervene in a mighty, spectacular way that all men would realize that thou art in control. Yes. Now please help our brother Wooten, the director of this mission, as he brings the word today. Anoint him with thy presence, grant him grace and help to do what you want him to do. Lord, we pray that you'd anoint him as only you can do and that you would touch our hearts and minds together. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here together this morning to worship in your name. Yes, my Lord. Thank you for everything that you've done for each and every one of us and everything that you've given us. Uh, we, we pray for the those that are in the hospital. I don't want to forget those and, and those that are in quarantine that can't be here to, to worship you and hear, hear the word. Uh, please bless this offering. Bless all those that give to it, those that, that that want to but just can't and be with brother Wooten as he brings us the message today uh, lift us all up speak to us all in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. Thank you for the giving, man. Thank you for loving God. Thank you for loving the mission. Thank you for loving each other. Amen. One more song, sir. Let's take it to the throne. All right, let's turn in our hymnals to song number 109. 109. I'm so glad I found a savior. His name is Jesus.
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's get our hearts ready for this message today. This morning, let's receive it. Let's cherish it. Let's make it ours. In the name of Jesus, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, what a wonderful day we have. Praise Amen. God. Saving, helping, keeping. What a wonderful, wonderful song we just sang. And praise the Lord for his greatness. How many of you are sleepy this morning? Raise your hand. Oh, good. A few of you are honest. The rest of you are already asleep. But wake up. <laughs> Shake yourself. I want you to stand up. I thought maybe Brother Ledger would have you stand, but he didn't. You stand up. <clears throat> Now, I want you to tell your neighbor you're glad you're here. Just tell your neighbor you're glad you're here. Glad you're here. Praise God. Just keep standing. We'll pray. Our Father, dear, we thank you again this morning for the privilege we have to know you. Lord, we thank you that battles can be overcome because of Jesus Christ in our hearts and our lives. And we pray this morning, thou shalt help us, dear Jesus, to stay awake. Help us, dear Lord, to grasp the message of the hour, dear Lord, for there may come a time when the message will stop, the message will be silent. Lord, help us this morning, we ask, to uh, encompass all that thou dost say to us in thy word, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. This morning, I want us to look into the book of Mark into the book of Mark, chapter 10. Mark, you don't have to stand. It's, well, it's too lengthy for, you, for me to read with you. But chapter 10 of the book of Mark. We want to begin down in verse 17. Down in verse 17. Mark, chapter 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, Do not commit adultery, Do not kill, Do not steal, Do not bear false witness, Defraud not, Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, well, who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Lord, we thank you again for the reading of your word. It's precious. It's true. Help us now, Lord. We ask to preach it. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In this passive scripture, as you look at it, it, it has some overwhelming thoughts. Uh, we find that looking at sometimes Jesus said things very bluntly. I do that sometimes, and afterwards I, I think maybe I said it too bluntly. And I wonder sometimes, does Jesus do the same thing? I don't think so, but I just wonder, you know, does he think sometimes? But sometimes bluntness will wake somebody up. It'll startle people. It'll get people 
concerned about, well, why did he say that? Why did he say it that way? Why was it seemingly so sharp to me that, that the words that he poured out forth upon me uh, triggered within me a response? And so we see here that the account is that there was a young man, according to one of the other gospel writers, he was a young man, and obviously he had obtained great possessions, great riches at an early age. We don't know why, we don't know what took place, how he got it or anything, whether he worked for it, I doubt it, since he was as young as what one of the writers says, but we find that he may have inherited it, may have gotten it, you know, through that 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 means, but we find that however he got it, he had these possessions and they had him. He had the possessions, but they also had him. So he came and he knelt at Jesus' feet and asked him, and there's four things that we're going to look at specifically in in this whole passage of scripture here this morning. One of them is, he says, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And this right here are some of the times the questions we ask. What can I do? What can I do? And we all sit down and sometimes we purpose it on the fact of how can I be able to work this thing so it'll work for me? What can I do? What can I obtain? Where can I go? How can I act? All of these things we ask ourselves, what can I do? To inherit eternal life. And we find here that that's the same thing that you and I will ask ourselves. And sometimes we'll ask the preacher. Sometimes we'll pray and ask the Lord, what can I do to do better? And so sometimes we will feel like, well, I need to educate myself. I need to become a brilliant scholar. I need to be able to exercise the books so that I can be able to be smart and and be able to study the theologians and and study the old writings and study Greek and Hebrew and be able to get all those things together so that I can be able to obtain salvation. Sometimes we think maybe as this young man did, here I am a rich man. I can use the riches to benefit the kingdom. I can do that that work out there in that means because I can provide for the missionaries. I can help the preacher. I can help the struggling church. I can help the evangelist. I can give and give and give and give and I can do that. And there are individuals that God blesses in that means for them to be able to do that. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing when you find people that do that. But then most of them hold on to their possessions like this young man because they held on to him. Sometimes we come to the Lord and say, well, I can can be able to make it somehow, some way with with my family and with my friends. I I have a sterling personality and, and maybe I can use my personality to gain my eternal salvation. I can be able to go out and, and be a charismatic individual and, and draw everybody unto me. And when I draw them unto me, then I can tell them about the gospel. I can preach to them the word of God and I can be able to hold them in my hands, as it were. We look for what we can do, what I can do to inherit eternal life. Well, looking at this in this manner, we find that Jesus said, you know the commandments, don't you? Oh, yeah, I know the commandments. I've done them. And we can ask you, what's your greatest sin? Well, I haven't killed anybody. And and that's kind of what he said. You know, I, I didn't commit adultery. I didn't go out and take somebody else's wife. I I didn't go out and get into deep sin. I didn't go out and get to those things out there that are forbidden in that area in sexual matters. He said, I I didn't go out and kill anybody. I I wasn't a murderer. I I didn't commit abortion and so on. I didn't do any of those things. I, I was clean in that area. I didn't steal anything. In fact, I gave a whole lot to others. I, I didn't take anything from anybody. I didn't bear false witness. I didn't lie on the folks. I didn't tell tales out of tale, 
out of school. I didn't try my best to hurt somebody by lying on them and making them look bad before others. I didn't defraud them. I didn't put them down, try to turn them and put them under. And I honored my mom and dad. I was good to mom and dad. Prayed for them, talked to them, gave them money, helped them out. I was good to my mom and dad. And he said, all these I observed from my youth up. So I, I've been a good boy. So why didn't he have eternal life then if he could do it? Why don't you have eternal life? If you went to Sunday school as a child and you learned the scriptures, you learned one or two, especially the easiest one, Jesus wept. I got that one down real pat, preacher, when I was a kid. I didn't get much else, but I, I did learn that much. And I, I remember the preacher preaching to me. I, I remember my Sunday school teacher teaching me about Noah and the ark and, and about Jonah and the whale. I remember those things, and, and I took them to heart. I went to revivals. I went to missionary services. I went to everything that there was out there. I had myself in such a manner. Then why do you ask how you can obtain how can you inherit eternal life if you've done all those things? What more is there left to do? Huh? But he said, what shall I do? That I may inherit eternal life. Where are you on that? Are you doing the same thing? Asking God, what can I do? Not what can you do for me, Lord. Jesus beholding him, and this right here is the second point in this little message this morning. Jesus said one thing you lack. Now Jesus wasn't really pointing out to the simple fact that he could do anything to obtain salvation, but this is what he said to him. He put his finger on the thing that had his heart and life tied up. Keep my finger down. He put his finger on the one thing that was tying this young fella up, keeping him from gaining victory in his spiritual life. And sometimes the Lord comes and puts his finger on that one thing in your life. I want you to surrender this. I want you to surrender this. Talking to a young man several years ago, and he held on to his family. He refused to put his family on the altar, refused to give his family to the Lord. He would live for them and die for them if he needed. And his family became his God. His family stood between him and the Lord. I knew a young man that made the comment and made the statement that he'd not give up his girlfriend for anybody, not even God. And his girlfriend became his God. His girlfriend stood between him and the Lord. His girlfriend cast a shadow on God in his life. The man's family cast a shadow on God in his life. And the Bible says, when you walk in darkness... And you turn from him. How great is that darkness? It gets greater, friends. I don't know how black darkness can be. Well, we find here that Jesus says, Go and sell whatsoever thou hast, and give the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And this is the part here that I believe the young man turned aside from. He could not give those things up. Jesus put his finger on it. But Jesus didn't stop there. He said, take up thy cross. Follow me. A surrendered life? You, you want me to surrender? You want me to follow you? You want me to be a Christian? You want me to serve you? You want me to walk in the way that you're showing me? You want me to be that way? 
And how can I do it? I can take up my cross. And that means when I take up the cross, I have to lay down the things I have in my hands. If I take up the cross, I have to lay down the things that I have in my hands. This young man had a world of wealth at his disposal. In his hands, he carried all those things. But in order to take up his cross, he had to lay those things down. Friends, you have to do the same thing. Maybe you, you're like me. You don't have a lot of riches. You may not have a whole lot of this world's goods. You may not have a whole lot of the things that people look upon in order to build you up and make you look really good in the sight of man. But I can tell you one thing, friends. We come to a point and a place in our life where if we take up the cross, we're going to give up those things. And friends, if you started that way with Jesus Christ, you will have to give up the world. You'll have to give up the pleasures. You'll have to give up the sinful things that bind you and that have captured you and that have held you. And you'll have to take up the cross of Jesus Christ. And not only taking up a cross and becoming sacrificial in that sense, but he says to follow me. Follow me. Young man. <laughs> a young man that thinks he knows everything. And it doesn't make any difference where you go or what you do. He already knows. And I'm, I'm serious about that. He already knew all about it. But you could go somewhere with that young fella. He'd never before been there in his whole life. But he'd march right out in front of the crowd just like he was the leader and expect to take you who knows where because he thought he was the leader. Now, let me tell you something, friends. Some of you are in that position today where you think you're the leader of your life. You've taken hold of your life. You've lifted yourself up. You've pushed yourself out in front so that you can even be in front of Jesus Christ. But he didn't say for you to lead. He said for you to follow me. He said for you to follow. I'm to follow. I, I, that means I'm to be behind him, not in front of him. He made it very plain, this young man, all three accounts. These are the words that he says, follow me. In Matthew, he says, follow me. In Luke, he says, follow me. In Mark, he says to follow me. Sometimes it's hard for us to follow somebody else. But that's what Jesus said to this young man. And in order to follow, hear me, friend, in order to follow, you've got to surrender. You, you've got to come to a place of obedience. If the leader gives instructions, you've got to be obedient and follow. Are, are you listening this morning? Are you grasping? what I'm trying to say to you. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. I believe that was the sticking point more than it was the losing of the possessions. Because you see, he might be able to give up the possessions, but he might still have a position. And in that position, he still might be able to gain more riches. Because he might have been of that type and that style of personality that he just knew how to make money. He was a Midas in that sense. Who knows? And he could have easily given that up. But to leave it where it was was quite another thing. And to take up a cross, he had to lay those things down. And now, not only with the cross and without the riches, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. That's what he's saying to me and you today. That's what he's implying to us concerning the scriptures, that we, you and I, give up everything we have. You say, I don't have much, but hey, will you be willing to give it up? And, and will you take up your cross? And when you take up your cross, then will you follow Jesus? 
Praise God for both. Third point in this passage of scripture here is that after this young man says that he can't do it because he went away grieved, the scripture says, Jesus makes a comment. Jesus makes a comment. And this is what he said. How hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Wasn't a question. It was an exclamation. It is easier. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, we, you and I think that we have a needle here and we're going <clears> to <throat> put that camel through that needle eye. Huh? But there was a small gate in the walls of Jerusalem and it was like a needle. And in order for people to go through that, they had to stoop down. But in order to get a camel through it, he had to be stripped of everything and he had to kneel down and go through it on his knees. It was not easy for a camel to go through that eye of the needle gate. Friends, Jesus made that point concerning that young man, his riches and all that was involved with him after the young man was grieved and left. And it so astonished the people. Now listen to me. It so astonished the people that somebody spoke up and said, well, then just who can be saved? This is the third thing that all three accounts give to us. The first one, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The second one is to follow me. It's getting kind of close. Friends, let me tell you something. Jesus taught a closeness. He taught a narrow way. <coughs> he taught a non-worldly non way. He taught the people that there were things that they would have to be able to do and things they would have to stop doing in order to follow him. And friends, that's what we're going to have to do. You think God's going to let me and you slide by? In this world? Do you think he's going to let the church and the preachers and the evangelists and you as lay people in the church, do you think that God's going to let you and I slip by when he made those people back in his day and time give up everything, take up their cross and follow him? Do you think he's going to allow us not to do that? Absolutely not. You're going to have to take up a cross. You're going to have to follow him. And when he said, that person said, who then can be saved? I think they were really in earnest about it because here Jesus had pointed out to this young man, you cannot go with what you have. You have to go with what I give you. Amen. 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 We want to take a boatload of stuff. And Jesus says, no. I want you to follow me and carry your cross. So who then can be saved? Let me look at it just for a few minutes, if you will. A lot of people around the world this morning profess religion. Did you hear me? Profess religion. You go to some of the big churches and some of the little churches and some of the medium-sized churches and you'll find a lot of people there profess religion and then they go right out and they sin. Every day, word, thought, and deed. We had a, a fellow who came to visit me one day there in Lexington, sitting out on the porch, he and I talk. He and I always had good good conversations, you know, a debating kind of conversation. I loved it, and he did too. We were good friends. But he came down to where he was in such a place, in such a manner, and he didn't know what to do. And he came to me, and he said, oh, Reverend, he said, well, what am I supposed to do? And I said to him, you're supposed to follow Jesus. 
I said, I've been trying to tell you this all along. You've got to give up your sin. You've got to quit the things that you're doing and do what Jesus wants you to do. You have to take up your cross and follow him. He looked at me and said, I don't know if I can do that. My preacher doesn't preach that way. Let me tell you, sirs, that preacher is going to be in judgment as well as that man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, told me he was in such despair. He was in awful despair. He said, I took my gun out. He said, I laid it on my chest and slept with it at night and hoped that the thing would go off and blow me in pieces. Mm -hmm. I said, what an awful thought to go out into eternity. He said, do you think I'd make a heaven? I said, no, you won't. I said, no, you won't. Friends, let me tell you something. We have to come to a place of asking, well, who's going to be saved then? If the righteous, hear me, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the sinner and the ungodly appear? Huh? That should wake us up. If the righteous scarcely be saved. Where's the rest of them going to stand? Now you profess to be saved this morning. If you barely make it in, you're scarcely saved. What about the rest of you that don't give a whoop about it? Hmm? Who then can be saved? But Jesus doesn't leave that question unanswered, thank God. He says to them, with men it is impossible but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Amen. What's he saying here? You cannot save yourself. You cannot do one thing in order to be able to make yourself more, more of a Christian. You cannot do one thing to get yourself closer to heaven. But I can tell you one thing. God can, hallelujah, forever. God can reach down and change that wicked heart into a, a heart that's alive unto him. Hallelujah. God can reach down and transform you and come bring you out of darkness into light. God can reach down and renew your mind. God can reach down and change you. Hallelujah forever. It's not impossible with him, but it is with people. Friends, if you've been saved, if you have truly been saved this morning, then you should be doing what you can to keep others out of hell. Amen. 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 That's right. I hear some of you talking about the scriptures and reading the Bible to each other, trying to help each other, and you're blind leading the blind. Hear me. If you have sin on board as a teacher and you're trying your best to teach the scriptures, you're going to be held responsible to that when you get to the judgment. Huh? You think that you can teach and you can counsel and you can do what you want to to other people. But let me tell you something, friends. If you're not a Christian and you're trying your best to do things like that, you're going to be held accountable to judgment because of the teachings you're teaching. God, wake us up this morning. That's the fourth thing that was in all three accounts. With men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. You can't save yourself. Baptism won't save you. You can be baptized in every tadpole hole between here and yonder, and every tadpole can know your license plate, and you will still go down a wet, dry center and come up a wet one. Baptism does not save. Joining the church doesn't save you. You can join every church you ever want to be. There's some churches you put your name on, you never can come off that church list. You're on it forever. You're there from the cradle roll until the, you drop dead, and then they have you still on the honorary roll. <laughs> church membership is not going to save you. For all have
have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have. Past. It's been forgiven. It's been cleaned. The slate's been wiped clean. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Right there in the Roman letter, Paul fulfills just exactly what God does for us. He set forth Jesus Christ to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Praise God the Lord. This morning, friend, you read the account that I read to you this morning and you find the other two in Matthew and in Luke and read them and you'll come to the same conclusion I did. You can't do a thing to inherit eternal life because Jesus Christ did it at the cross. Amen. Praise God forever. Hallelujah! Praise God forever. Let's stand for prayer. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Jesus, so sweet today. Praise God forever. Thank you. Thank you for the message of the hour. Help our men. Help our women, lady. We pray, Lord, help them to think on these things. And Father, if they're not where they need to be, I ask you, help them to find a place, dear Lord, of prayer where they can be able to come to that place of knowing what you can do in their lives and their hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen.